Um, so as a Christian, like, so we believe that the, the angel Jibreel went down to Prophet Muhammad, but as a Christian, what do you believe happened? To who? To Muhammad? Yeah, like, what okay, was According to our Bible, you're asking me a good question. Not just Muhammad. Anyone who comes claiming to be a prophet, like Joseph Smith in America, the Mormon church, or Ellen G. White, who thought she was a prophet. Anyone who comes saying they're a prophet, who then spreads a message that contradicts what Jesus taught, and his followers taught that prophet is not from God. He's deceived by Satan. And I can give you the verses. So if I don't think the Bible's corrupt, this is why you Muslims have to say the Bible's corrupt. Because you know, if the Bible's not corrupt, then the Quran cannot be true. That's why you say, oh, the Bible's corrupt, because it shows the Quran is wrong. But if the Bible is not corrupt, and the Bible came before the Quran, that means any scripture, whether the Book of Mormon or the Quran, cannot be from the true God. Because if the true God gave you the Bible, and then someone comes contrary to the Bible, then he's not from God, he's from the devil. So from our perspective, Muhammad, Baha'u'llah, Bab Allah, Joseph Smith, LNG, you name it, all of them were inspired by the devil because Jesus told us many false prophets, false Christ will come to do miracles to deceive you. I'm warning you in advance, don't be deceived. Here, show him in Matthew 24, verses 23 to 25. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. See, Jesus warned us, many will come after me, either saying I'm the Christ or I'm a prophet. They may even do miracles, but they're deceiving you because they're not from me. So how do I know? They cannot contradict the revelation that Jesus established and the apostles passed on, which is why Muslims have to say the Bible's corrupt because mm -hmm. they understand, wait, if the Bible of the Jews and Christians not corrupt, then we're in trouble because the Quran cannot be from the same God. Oh, so you must have changed it. No, we didn't change it. It's just that the Quran is not from the God revealed in Jesus. And now according to the Bible, Muhammad is not only a false prophet, He's an antichrist. Can I show you that? Okay, sure. From our Bible, even if you don't accept it. Go to 1 John, which is written by one of the Hawadi, a Hawadi, a disciple of Jesus, according to our Isnat, Sennat, our history. In 1 John 2, we are told many antichrists will be going into the world. Not one, but many. So if you go to 1 John 2, open it up, read 18 for him, and then we're going to read 22 to 23. It says, children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that antichrist is coming. So now many antichrists have come. So not only one, right? Not only one. Many are going to come, and therefore we know that is last hour. So how do I know an antichrist? How do I know he's a false antichrist? Here's a, here it is. First John 2, 22 to 23. Who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Now pay attention to this, Hisham. If I believe the Bible is God's word and it's not corrupted, I'm told a man comes and says, Jesus is not the Son of God and God is not the Father. That man is an antichrist. He's of the devil. So if I believe the Bible is not changed and I believe it's God's word and it's my criterion, and then I go to your Quran and in chapter 9, verse 30 says that the Jews say, Uzair is the Son of Allah. And the Nasara, the Christians say, the Messiah is the son of Allah. This is a saying from their mouths. And this, they imitate the unbelievers of old, how perverted they are. May Allah fight them. So here I'm told, Jesus is not the son of Allah. Allah is not his father. So can you see why, from a Christian perspective, that means Muhammad is an antichrist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see. But then who do you believe, like the Quran, like what is the Quran and like... Who wrote it? The Quran is a deception of Satan because we're told in Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9. But if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be anathema. So we are told that even Satan and angels who are fallen angels can appear to deceive people claiming to be Gabriel and bringing revelation here. Go to 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 and 15. When Muslims tell us Jibril came to Muhammad, I say, well, how do you know it's Jibril? I didn't know it's not Satan claiming to be Jibreel to deceive Muhammad into thinking he is from God and then has Muhammad condemn a fake Satan because the Iblis of the Quran is not the Satan mentioned in the Bible. They're not the same. So we've already been told before Muhammad and Joseph Smith, centuries before, expect Satan to appear to false prophets, confusing them, deceiving them into thinking they're from God to deceive people. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, just like the Bible told us, Muhammad shows up, Joseph Smith shows up, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed shows up, Bahallah shows up, Bab Allah shows up, Louis Farrakhan shows up, just like the Bible said. 
For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. So we're told Satan can appear as an angel of light, deceiving you into thinking he's not Satan. And then he will inspire you to appear as if you're a minister, an apostle, a rasul, but the end will expose you. And Muhammad had a very bad ending. But before I even go there, are you aware, according to your own tradition, this is in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Muhammad actually thought he was demon-possessed, majnun. He thought the spirit that violated him was evil and he wanted to kill himself until Khadija calmed him down. And Waraka bin Nufl supposedly said, with what you tell me is true, then the Namus has come to you. So my challenge to you, Zisham, is if you can find in the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament, where the true prophets of God or the apostle of Jesus experience what your prophet experienced when the spirit came to them or Gabriel came to them, where they were afraid or they were squeezed to the point they thought they're going to die or they start foaming at the mouth and thought that they were demon-possessed, want to kill themselves. Can you show me any of those prophets that experienced what Muhammad did? None of them. What Muhammad experienced is something no prophet before him experienced that was a true prophet. Read. When Gabriel comes to Mary and she's afraid, he says, do not be afraid. When Gabriel comes to Zechariah, the father of Yahya John, he says, do not be afraid. When Jesus appears to John in Revelation, he says, do not be afraid. When Gabriel comes to Daniel, he says, do not be afraid. The true prophets and messengers are comforted and strengthened, but your prophet was violated to the point he ran shivering to Khadija saying, cover me, and wanted to kill himself. That's not the same experience. So how come your prophet's experience is different from the experience of the true prophets of God? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't read hadith. But I, I, well, even I, well, I if you don't read hadith, then you can't explain the Quran to me because you don't know. If I say, just go to the Quran, show me when the Quran was sent down, to whom was sent down, and where. How are you going to answer that? The Quran doesn't tell you. What year was the Quran sent I mean, down? Like, like, I, I only like, I mean, I don't, I don't like go read hadith, but like my parents, they used to tell me about like the hadith and things like that. But some specific hadith, I don't research them up by myself. Okay. Research them because we did a session on it. He has a session here where I go to the hadith. We're showing Muhammad thought he was demon possessed and the symptoms he had. He would foam at the mouth. It says he would snort like a camel. We did a session and we gave you the hadith. That's no experience that any true prophet ever encountered. You will not find Daniel, He's he goes limp, and he starts, it says, snorting like a camel, and foaming, or thinking that he's demon-possessed. None of them, none of them went through these experiences. That explains Muhammad was right when he said, I think I'm Majnun, possessed by a jinn. Sadly, he was right. I mean, I can go deep into this, but what I'm trying to show you is, if I believe the Bible, if I believe the Bible is not corrupt, and the Bible tells me false prophets will come, and they will do miracles, not by God, but even by the power of Satan and demons. And Antichrist will come. And this is how you're going to know. They're going to say, Jesus is not the Son of God. God is not the Father. And then as a Christian, I come and I see Muhammad says, Jesus is not the Son of God. God is not the Father. Then as a Christian, do you see why? We say, oh, he is one of the Antichrists and false prophets that Jesus warned us about. Do you see it? Yes.